family. So today I'm going to be breaking down the concepts, the ideas, the mindset, all of those things that are important to understanding, unpacking how you go about making your own blends. And this can be for tea blends, this can be for tinctures, for capsules, for extracts, etc. It's one simple method and you need to know each of the different elements that I'm going to break down. So this is my TEA method. And don't be confused just from the name of it being TEA, looking like tea that it's only for teas. It actually applies to any blend. And the way that I came up with these methods and the things that I even want to share today is based on making my own formulas for years. But then also because I've been teaching for years to see that, you know, that's this is still the area where most herbalists struggle. And that's when they're on their own and they need to create their own blends. There are so many different methods out there and I share the different methods. And even though I love my method, I feel like it is the best method. And it's not even just being biased, but just from the results that it can yield. But I feel like people still kind of actually take my method and use it the wrong way. And so that's what I want to share more of today. So my TEA method, it has different components to it. So it's not just one T, one E, one A. We actually have three T's, an E, and two A's. If you have my books of Everyday Herbs, I do actually go into it in detail there. But then I go into it in even more detail and explain more of the recipe building process and all of these different concepts in more in depth. But... When I did share it, it used to just be three T's and E and an A. And now it's two A's. These, what um, is actually unique about this method is it actually has different parameters for if you're making a beverage blend and a medicinal blend. Now, it's going to take me a bit of time to talk about all of these different things. So I'm just choosing and electing what I'm going to talk about. So I'm not going to go into things like that, that which I've already talked about, which I've already written about um, many different times. So if you don't know the difference between a beverage blend and a medicinal blend, you can actually look in my, and I'll link it with the secrets to advanced formulation download that I have. It's also found in the two other books of mine that I mentioned. So you can use just the three teas for a beverage blend. And then if you want to have a medicinal blend, then that's when you need to pay attention to the E and the two A's. I also say, Please don't, you know, don't start a tea business selling blends if you don't understand these concepts fully in depth, each of them. And please don't make formulas for people if you don't understand these things. Why? Because you're missing the crucial components that are going to be, that are necessary to understand when you go into the blending process. And it's the reason why herbs and even herbalists have, uh, there's this, there's a lot of people who believe that, oh, herbs don't work or herbs don't work for everyone or all of those different things. And it's because there's just so many people who do, who do the bare minimum and don't do the due diligence to understand these things first. And, and let's continue. So the tea is for taste and it's about having a variety of different things. We want to make sure that our teas are complex, right? So we have different tastes and we have five different tastes in African herbalism. I actually have a video on the five tastes and I talk about the actions associated with them, the energetics associated with them. So it's not just making sure that it just really tastes good, but beyond the taste that you're feeling when your taste buds, there's certain parts of your body that's being waken up by certain tastes. It's connected to certain organs or systems. It's connected to certain actions, as I said, and processes in the body. And so when you're making sure that you have a diversification, you're making sure that you have something that's well-rounded and that it's not just working in one way, which is what a lot of people think. They think like, these are cold and flu herbs. These are heart herbs. These are this and that. No. All of the herbs are multifaceted. They all have more than one, and that's a common myth. They all have more than one or more than two functions. And so it's important to understand what those functions and everything is. But it's also important to even understand, other than the, the way that you your brain, the way that your brain interprets a different taste, 
um, understanding that it is more than just on the surface. It is more than just the flavor that you're tasting. There's different things that are happening in your body. There's different, uh, there's, there's different, as I said, actions and systems and all of these different things that are much more complex, even for something like taste. And when we talk about eating the rainbow, we're making sure that we're getting the uh, balance of different vitamins and minerals. So all of the different tastes usually come associated with maybe even different uh, phytochemicals, different compounds, different vitamins, mineral content. All of those different things are wrapped up in one simple concept of taste. So if you think that when I, or if you've seen this method and you just think that, oh, okay, I need to have a spicy and a sweet or a bitter and a salty together, then that's just the surface level. There's much more in depth that I can't go into, of course, today because I'll probably spend about 30 minutes, maybe more. And so I need to continue. But all of these things you can find in herbal holistic healing. Okay. okay. The next, as I talked about the different um, tastes, will continue. Then the next T is textures. And this is adding different textures and the colors as well make the tea more attractive. So just like the same way, as I said, make it more attractive, we have unappealing and appealing. We have attractive and unattractive. And when something's unattractive, it repels you. You want to stay away from it. If you see um, some food and it doesn't look good, then it's not going to make you want to actually, it's not inviting to you. It's not going to make it appealing to you and make you want to try it. And so we want to make sure that when we're making our teas, that we're not just having them monotone, bland, and boring. And, and that's even what a lot of people probably think about teas and all those different things. So you want to make sure that the whole, the whole experience from the different tastes that you're tasting, the different smells and aromas, the different colors, all of it is part of the experience. And it actually can um, give even better results. And what I mean by that is they'll be more excited to try it. It's more of an, a positive experience for them. Um, it's something that they can look forward to. And so textures is important. Um, don't just, you know, just have piles and layers of greens or yellows or different things like that. But along with the textures, it is important that we pay attention to the time. This is one of the main areas that herbalists forget. And now when I talked about my TA method and I talked about how most of the time it's used incorrectly, the way that it's used incorrectly is people go through each of these different things as in steps, like in a regimen. That's not the best way to use this, this formula. The best way to use this formula is after you've already created your blend to use this as a way to check yourself. And so I'll get a little bit into that more. But one of the things that you really want to check is to make sure that the time is correct. So for those who asked, steeping or boiling, how do you know? This is There's no concrete rules in herbalism. So there's always exceptions to this. And I do teach about the exceptions in my tea making course that I have. Um, but these are just general guidelines. You may sometimes end up actually steeping certain roots. And the time is important because just like with cooking, you have raw or undercooked, then you have perfectly cooked, right? And then you have overcooked. So you can definitely overcook or overdo different things. Or you, as we know, the longer maybe you cook your vegetables or whatever, it takes some of the nutrients out of it. Or cooking in general takes some of the nutrients out of it. So when you overdo it, you can lose uh, vital parts and vital medicinal properties that you're looking for in your plant. And so, um, let me go ahead and share myself. And so, like I said, it's not just about having the right ingredients that makes your meal come out the way that you expect it. It's also about the methods that you use to cook, um, the seasonings, all those different things, right? So there's more than just having the right ingredients. So you can have the right blend, but if you prepare it wrong, then it's not going to be as effective for you. Um, I'm not going to go into all the different tips because like I said, those are things that you can find in my books and courses and I don't want to do it to uh, be too exhausting on all this. But let's say in, in many of the herbs, as the essential oils of the plants 
are very are what we're looking for for the medicinal aspects but they're also very volatile so we think think of them more as fragile so we need to handle them properly so we need to make sure that for each herb or whatever that we're using that it's appropriate so if we make a blend and we have roots and leaves right and the roots that we have need to be boiled for um 20 or maybe 30 minutes and then things that we have that need to be steeped need to be steeped for only about eight minutes okay so then that's where the issue is something's going to be underdone or something's going to be overdone and you're not going to get the max benefits out of it and so we need to pay attention to the time and there's different things that we can do to um blend them all together to where they can be um utilized for like for a shorter amount of time there's different things you can do there's certain roots like i said that need to actually be steeped instead there's certain things that you want to do when you're making your infusions or decoctions to make sure that you don't have all of the different nutrients absorb or evaporate out of it when you're making it so there's a lot of different things that you need to know about it but the time aspect is very important this is usually where people do mess up all right, so let's continue. I'm not going to go into this too deeply, but this is just an example of different colors that we see, the different spectrums of colors that we see. And then, of course, there's more colors than this. And then there's some that are variant. Um, so they'll be like yellowish orange or all of those different things. And so we just want to make sure that we have a variety of all those different things. Again, those three T's are what you're going to use as your check when you're making your beverage blend just to make sure that it is uh, formulated properly and then also prepared properly. Both of those are equally equally important. One is not more important than the other. Okay, and both of them can be the downfall of a blend. So now let's go into the more technical sides. This is where I said, please don't make you know formulas for people if you don't understand these concepts, um, and please don't you know make uh, mass market of blends like open up your tea shop and all of those different things before you. You understand these different things because they're very important and this is also where people have make mistakes because as herbalists i find that either people overcomplicate things that are um they need to be thinking more just simplistic about or they think they know a lot more than they do on certain things so it's just like there's always for some reason it's just like, like usually never balance all right so let me go ahead and talk a little bit about energetics and i'm not going to go into it too long so a lot of times when people think about energetics they just think oh, okay i need to have 50 50 of moistening and drying herbs or i need to have 50 50 of hot and cold herbs and that's me um, paying attention to energetics and that's me having a balanced blood no so it's much more than that and this is the part where it makes this is this is really where you see that differentiation between pharmaceuticals or using herbs as symptoms and more of a holistic approach this is more person specific and a person specific perspective but also utilizing and being specific to what they're going through as well so when we talk about energetics or the different uh energy um qualities people have their own constitution as it's called we have our own energetics our body has its own energetics and that can change um then the plants also do as well and certain conditions in the body or certain diseases disorders whatever that we may be trying to address also comes with its own set of energetics and so it's important to understand those three components and so it's not just about the herbs that you put together being 50 50 balanced down the middle and when you're making formulas it doesn't need to be 50 50. um and that's what my problem is with certain um methods that do like percentages and whatnot i share that because that's just like one of the most popular and like i said i share multiple methods not just my own um but what i notice from ones that have these concrete numbers or even um, certain 
or even certain formulas that maybe even just do numbers like three, two, one, or whatever, is that people think that they really just need to be rigid and stick to that exact percentage. And that is wrong if you deviate from it. So it just really takes away some of the um, uniqueness and it really takes away um, some of the different nuances that there are. Um, and like I said, there are no concrete rules. So sometimes those percentages may work and they may work really well, but sometimes you may need to adjust things. And so think of it as AI. AI can do wonderful things and it can do and replicate things that humans are doing. But AI still needs to, AI still makes mistakes too, but AI also needs to be checked uh, by a human and even programmed by a human. There are certain things that AI, robots, whatever, cannot do that we can. So, I mean, yeah, it can write text, but it's not good at like telling stories, things that are relatable, telling, you know, life experiences because it, because it lacks that. And so methods with these concrete numbers are also the same way. They can be used as guides, but ultimately it's us that is the, the professional. Ultimately it's us that is the brain behind these methods. And so we need to be okay or feel okay and feel comfortable changing things and making it work for the, the person or for the situation. These, the, the methods, these other methods like I'm talking about with these percentages and these numbers, they do, they do not take every single variation into account. And even though herbalism is part science, yeah, I mean, it is part analytical, yeah, and logical in, in many ways, but it also is our intuition, our spiritual, and all of these other things as well. So we need to realize that coming with this, um, this one way of thinking with rules, guidelines, and um, all of these different things, that it's not always going to be the best. It's not always going to give the best results. And we need to be able to also trust ourselves and, you know, and be able to make our own methods, which is why I made my own. And it doesn't come with any numbers or anything like that, because that's always going to change and fluctuate. But it just comes with the certain things that you need to be mindful of, the certain things that you need to check to make sure that it's going to be well, well rounded um, and well balanced. And it's and it's um, in the blend. All right. So. Energetics, like I said, it's more than just the temperature. It's more than just the moisture level. Also, it takes into account the tone. So it's often not thought about. Is is there a need for stimulation? Is there a need to for relaxation? Um, so those things, like I said, a lot of times we think we understand these concepts, but do we really? And so I have in the Herbal Holistic Healing, if you have Herbal Holistic Healing, you should get the workbook. And the reason why you want to get the workbook is reading the information is great, but actually doing it on your own is how you'll actually learn and make sure that you actually retain the information. And actually, once you actually have to exercise your brain muscle and do it, then that's how you'll see what methods actually work for you and how much um, you need to, how much more you need to study on certain concepts. So I do have on energetics, I do have a section on energetics and understanding also about the disease and disorder part of it, what is actually needed. So I don't want to go too much into that because I do, because a, one of the A's is action. So I'll have to dive into that more. But that's also why in the practitioner database collection, there's book one, and I talk about the types of diseases and disorders. Now, I'm sure when people are looking at the different chapters that, I, that it has and reading through the description, people are not necessarily going to see the importance of that chapter. But it is very important because it's very important to understand what you're actually even dealing with. So is this a physical, is this a chemical, is this a 
hormonal or chemical disease, that's going to tell you what's needed. And many times it can be more than one. Um, is, you know, is this emotional? And then also, is it chronic or is it acute? And then understanding the differences in dosaging and how you actually go about addressing those types of diseases and disorders. And so it goes through examples and all that explaining what the manifestations usually look like. And then also gives you a chance to identify it based on different um, diseases to make sure that you retain that information. So that was in the practitioner database. So I have, you know, people are usually very interested in the book parts, but the workbooks are very important because that's where the real work gets done. Okay, so that's just the E part of it. Like I said, um, a lot of people think that they um, understand the energetics part um, and they may be missing certain parts of it. So I want to share that. And the other thing is I do feel like people a lot of times overcomplicate energetics. Um, and so it's just, it's just, it's just, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot to unpack. And so I do that more. I'm trying to think which specific course where I really break energetics down more. Probably the holistic herbalist course, possibly the African herbalism course, where I kind of break down the energetics part more. Or probably, well, probably which is my holistic herbalist course. Um, but either way, I do explain it more. And I do share um, that worksheet for those. So I have a chapter on it on herbal, in herbal holistic healing. And then there's in the workbook for you to actually practice. All right. And then after the E, we have our two A's. The affinity. So each herb has an organ affinity and it can encompass multiple organs or systems. That's perfectly normal. As I said, herbs do more than one thing. That's one of the main things that a lot of times people think. They, they put each herb in categories and don't understand that herbs overlap in a lot of different things. Sometimes they may even work in ways that are seen contradictory. And that's why I said, yeah. It's science, but a lot of times it, it, it passes our own reasoning. And it's just because they were designed that way by a creator who passes all of our understanding. All right. So the organ affinity is the part of the body that has a that the herb has a specific effect on or maybe a stronger effect on or a natural inclination to work in this part of the body to go to this part of the body. And so understanding that part of it is important. Because, like I said, you can say, okay, these herbs are for this condition. But you, by knowing the affinity, you can be more specific. So, yeah, um, you can, and the other part is the action. So, you can go by the action and say, okay, I need this action. But if it's not with the, the specific affinity, then it might not be the best option. So, if you don't understand affinity... Or even like what I'm talking about, the action. This might be a little bit confusing. So let me take a second or think about how I can um, explain it and or, or get a, an example to, to better, um, um, to make it more relevant. Okay. So let's say this. Let's say we have a certain action, which I'll explain a little bit more about what the actions are. Um, and so let's say we, we are just, someone says, okay. Like they want a diuretic herb. So pretty much most herbs are have a diuretic uh, action. So you pretty much have anything. You can think, okay, what what's the actual what's actually going on? Male or female? So these are all of these different things can break it down more. And then that's pretty much, you know, kind of like how the affinity could be. If it's for the woman's reproductive system, it might, it would be usually a different it might be a different option other than if it's for the men and it's for the prostate or something like that um and that's that affinity um then if a person has multiple conditions um they may need a diuretic but they may also need something else and so we might want to choose an herb that is multifaceted that has an affinity for this and this so um there's all these, basically, 
which is why I'm not a fan of lists because from lists, all you're doing is narrowing it down to get as specific as possible to get the remedy that's going to be for that specific person, for that specific action, for that specific circumstance. And so the list needs to be getting smaller and smaller, smaller. But what people do is they'll take the list and they'll just say, okay, well, I need a diuretic. I know this is 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 diuretic. Let me take them all. And a lot of times, like I said, there's no real method to it. And so what will happen is a lot of times they'll just be like, okay, I'll use a teaspoon of this, a teaspoon of this, a teaspoon of this. I really like this herb, so I'll use maybe two teaspoons of that. There's no real thinking behind it. There's no real strategy. And so that's when you get the lackluster results. So it's more than just, okay, uh, oh, um, I'm noticing my son seems like he's coming down with a cold. Okay. I know ginger works for that. Oh, I heard, I heard about orange peel and it's good for congestion. This is this and this. This herb does that. Oh, I know that this. Oh, I know that this is a uh, antiviral. And what is this? This is his <laughs> Um, You know, and and just we'll do it like that. And while you can certainly do it like that, should you? So could you? Yes. Should you? Would you? Hopefully not. After learning about what um, this method that I'm sharing here today. All right, so anyway, I'm playing around. So let's get to the action. I spent too much time, uh, more than I wanted to, but at least I got a laugh out of myself. All right, lastly, action. So think of herbs, right, as tools in a toolkit. Each of them have a specific purpose. Now, I don't know much about tools. My husband's a handyman, but... If I need a hammer, I'm not going to get a wrench, right? And I don't expect the same result if I use a wrench versus a hammer. Or, um, you know, the same thing. If I get a screwdriver and I need a wrench, I'm not going to be expecting the same result. Um, and so understanding that action is important. But what's more important than the what, like what the action is, is the why and the how. And I talk about the why and the how all the time. I talk about all the time how I want to get rid of the word what because it doesn't really give you the information that you need and it doesn't really give the deeper understanding that is really required. So just as knowing, like I said, uh, how the tool works to be able to understand, you want to understand how an herb actually achieves the action that it does. So just because it's the right action, it doesn't mean that it's actually going to work in the right way. So like, let's talk about anti-inflammatory herbs. As I talked about, most herbs are diuretic. Most herbs are anti-inflammatory, but they all work in different ways. So if your inflammation is caused by X, Y, Z, you need to make sure that this herb works by X, Y, Z pathway. So certain herbs may work on different pathways, like turmeric at certain um, times when it would be beneficial. Others work in a, another another way. And so you need to understand, it's not just about, oh, this herb is anti-inflammatory, but how does it actually get that action to make sure that it's actually best suited for what you're looking for. So um, if something helps with, like if you say, oh, I have digestion, like you have digestive issues um you're bloated or whatever so you want to use an herb for a digestive support or whatever understanding what that herb is going to do is it going to actually soothe the muscles of your stomach to stop cramping is it um helping to um have your liver juices you know your the bowel for, um happen so that the, the speeds up the digestion like so what is the actual what's the actual um problem um is it that you have too much stomach acid and then maybe you need a, a demulsant herb or something like that to kind of soothe and form a barrier um so there's just different ways and so you need to understand how it actually does what it does for it to be the most effective and so 
that is the end. I'll go all the way back to slide one. So each of these components are important, not just one on their, just not just one on their own. All of them put together is what makes it, um, which makes it powerful. All of these things put together is what makes it truly beneficial um, for the person. This, all of this together is what makes it balanced. And now, before I finish, the last thing I want to share is it doesn't just stop at the formula. The formula is great, but what other things are you doing currently that's either helping or hurting the situation? And how are you going to rectify that? Because, yeah, maybe I can make the journey up the mountain, but if I can just have a smooth passageway, I'll be able to get to my destination faster. It's going to take less effort. And I'm not actually fighting, you know, fighting myself or fighting against the herbs or what I'm saying that I really want. And so it's important to make sure you address the things that you're um, doing. What's the purpose of taking this wonderful tea blend every day, but you're still not eating properly, like, or you're still putting yourself in the stressful environment or doing whatever it is that brought that problem about in the first place? In that case, it'd be just using it as, you know, uh, it wouldn't be using it even as preventative. It'd be using it as reactionary. And so it's not going to be as effective. And so you might want to say, oh, well, I tried the herb and it didn't work. But maybe it's because you didn't do the next thing, which is having a program, a wellness program or a protocol. So it's not just about recipes. You want to also go further and put it together with a program or a protocol. So I have a section on that also in Herbal Holistic Healing. I pretty much I put every single thing in there that I felt was really important for all these to, to understand, to go from understanding um, the different herbs, understanding your body and the herbs better, understanding the different concepts and putting it all together in a holistic perspective. Then from there, once you understand that and you use some of the different recipes and different things that I share, then you'll be able to make your own recipes. And then as you continue, you'll be able to make your own wellness programs. So you'll be able to have herbal holistic healing in your life um, and for those around you in your community. So I hope that this video was helpful and that hopefully cleared up some of the myths and misconceptions around blending formulas and, you know, it's not to make people feel overwhelmed or to make people feel like things are difficult. But sometimes if things seem too easy, there might be a reason why. You might be missing something. And so that's what I wanted to share. And I also want to give the importance, like I said, of respecting the field of herbalism, respecting um, herbs and doing your due diligence and, you know, actually taking the time to do things the correct way. All right. So that's all I have. And I'll see you all in the next one. If you have any comments, any aha moments, feel free to leave.